How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato. You're watching Nature Here and Now. So you know what? It's October, right? And being October, no other month of the year gives quite so much attention to spiders than the month of October. And of course, Halloween plays no small role in that fact. Halloween is when we like to explore the more dramatic and creative corners of our imagination. And those dark corners are the perfect habitats for spiders. So naturally, October is the time of spiders. Everyone's scared of spiders. We all have at least a percentage of friends who have total fear and phobia of spiders. Whether it's a tarantula, the famous black widow, or even that characteristic orb that lies midair at face height waiting for us all to walk smack dab into the center of it. That's where we're going to start this journey, the orb weavers. We can all speak from experience that the orb weavers are probably the, the most common spiders we run into. Those are the spiders responsible for the magnificent aerial webs resembling a broken pane of glass. We've all walked face first into one of those webs, and it's at that moment that we cause ourselves much more damage or harm than the spider could possibly inflict on us. We start smacking our bodies and running right into the tree next to us. It's so embarrassing and you always quickly look around to see who saw it. Most of the time, the spider is long gone, running for its little life from the massive giant that just came crashing into its life. Those webs are celebrated and admired by many because they truly represent a perfect marriage between beauty and architecture. They are like some kind of geometric bandage between dimensions floating mid-air. You just see this thing floating out of nowhere that, that looks like shattered glass. But where's the glass? Orb weavers play such a role in the balance of nature that we should encourage every single one of them that we see. Yeah, it's, it's a little alarming when you find your face entangled in their webs, wondering where that spider is, but they stay in their webs, right? They catch sometimes you know, a beautiful insect, but most of the time they are keeping the insects in check. You know, they're, they're eliminating the mosquitoes, some of the moths and other insects that may or may not harm our crops and agriculture. You got to keep in mind that without spiders, the invertebrate world would run rampant. There would be a, a heck of a lot less stuff to keep them in check. And nature out of balance is a world in turmoil. There are many, many types of spiders that fall under the category of orb weavers. They're simply named for the style of webs that they create. You have many orb weavers that are so small you can barely detect them. And of course you have some orb weavers that are almost as big as your face, such as the Nephila and golden silk spiders. My favorite of the orb weavers in my region happen to be the black and yellow Argiopes. They're pretty large, but you know, they stick to their webs, and no pun intended, and they happen to be very mild-mannered. I've actually handled some of these spiders for, you know, demonstrations and for the you know, purpose of filming videos in the past. I've never had any kind of aggression or unsavory behavior from any of the orb weavers, and of course the archaipes are no exception. I just love the orb weavers. They're beautiful, they're mild-mannered, they stay in their webs, and they mind their own business. You go to interact with one and it immediately darts off into a corner or beneath a leaf somewhere, not to be seen until hours later. But of course, those aren't the only spiders I want to talk about in this video. Oh no, like I mentioned before, black widows are definitely a spider that strike fear and terror in the hearts of millions. So much so that these small, timid animals' reputations definitely precede them. Deadly, bold, and angry are traits that, that most people associate with black widows. That is not the case. Black widows are some of the shyest, most timid animals that I know. And believe me, I know. I've spent so much time hunting out and observing these spiders in order to better understand them and also share with the public that these spiders are not quite the monsters we believe them to be. They are far from it, in fact. Upon approaching their webs, I need to be so gentle with every move I make. Not because they have a hair trigger or an aggressive temper. No, it's because they will easily flee at the slightest hint of any movement or vibration as I approach them. 
If you're not a food item, the Black Widow wants nothing to do with you. I have worked with them so many times and I have never seen anything whatsoever that represents an angry temperament or cantankerous Black Widow. You pretty much have to force them to bite. I would never suggest for anyone to interact with a Black Widow or any spider for that matter, but you gotta believe me when I say you are at far greater risk of being struck by lightning than being bit by a Black Widow. If you happen to be that one rare human being that accidentally presses down or squeezes a Black Widow unbeknownst, that defensive bite delivered by the Widow is rarely as fatal as legend has it. The last fatality from a Black Widow bite was, what, 1983? No, and to take that even further, most Black Widow bites happen to be dry bites. They don't deliver any venom whatsoever. It's just the spider being like, hey, whoa, there's somebody underneath you, and a little bit of a bite to get your attention so it can take off, you know, run away. Again, these bites are almost never ever fatal, contrary to common belief. Just like all venomous animals, the proteins and components that make up their venoms are a very precious commodity and very cost intensive. It takes a lot of energy and nutrition to be able to create those, those venomous compounds and they don't just want to waste it on something that is not a food item. You know, they, they need to secure that food and if they can't do so, they either starve to death or get injured trying to secure that food. They're not going to just use that for no reason. That'd be like a hunter going out in the dead of winter to, you know, harvest an elk for their family and just shooting off all their rifles because they heard a scary sound in the bushes. How are you going to feed yourself that way? Long story short, black widows are not monsters. In fact, that hourglass is a perfect testament to the point I'm trying to make. The spider would rather avoid conflict of any sort. It's, it wears a flag saying, hey, you know, I scare easily, uh, I'm really timid and shy, you know, try not to approach me or harm me or else I'm going to have to mace you. How aggressive is that? It's basically a creature saying, you know, I don't want any trouble, I'll go this way, you go that way. And it's using this bright red hourglass on a black background to let us know that very thing. So, last but not least, for this video anyways, let me address all those, those spiders that like to prowl and scurry across the ground and the walls and ceilings of our homes. Those were the ones that truly struck fear in my heart. Those were the ones of my nightmares and my imagination. The wolf spiders, the grass spiders, the tation areas, oh, they were scary to me. Obviously, they don't spend their entire lives within a web of safety and concealment. To me, they're more like the athletes of the spider world. Of course, you know, jumping spiders probably get that, that medal, but I'm saving them for another video. But these runners, these athletes, are capable of being there one second and gone the next. Their shape is the true embodiment of spider strength and speed. They have powerful legs, their abdomens are built for movement, speed, and agility. It's not this round, clumsy handicap that can easily get caught or get in the way and slow them down. Furthermore, these spiders can come in any size, and that definitely invoked a lot of fear in me. Many times I was minding my own business only to glance left or right, or worse, look up and come face to face with eight legs of terror staring right back at me. Yes, every time I had such an experience, I know in my heart the spider was quite aware of me well before I was aware of it. Staring, thinking, pondering. I would often freeze, unable to think straight, and wondering, what happens next? What do I do? I've seen these things hunt, I've seen them tackle prey, I've seen them run, and boy can they run. Well, let me tell you, I got tired of the power my feared held over me. I forced myself to confront it, and that I did. I learned, I watched, 
and I learned some more. I knew that fear was in my head and it deserved far less real estate in my mind than I was allowing it. I knew they were timid, harmless, and to be honest, I knew they were just like everything else. Animals looking to live their own life free of danger, hiding from their own fears, and in most cases, they saw us as an extension of the landscape. Unless we are molesting them, they have no qualms with us whatsoever. So much so that over the years, I have cultivated and nurtured my curiosity for spiders into something I am quite fond of. Little animals that often find themselves lost and dehydrated within our homes. Animals hiding in their tents, outdoors, waiting for meals to wheels to deliver their, their dinner. Or otherwise, harmless predators walking the land, hoping to earn their keep by finding food and surviving long enough to get back to home in one piece. Just like any other animal out there. Just like birds, foxes, or even puppies. <laughs> of course, far less curious and extroverted than puppies. Would you get my point? These animals are crucial members of our world, and I find myself so enriched to have worn myself up to them. They're gentle when I work with them. They're almost always far less inclined to be cranky than nearly all the other animals out there. And that's saying a lot because animals are seldom aggressive whatsoever. Uh, what I'm saying throughout this entire video, basically, is the fact that it is fun to embrace the, our imaginations and entertainment that spiders hold, you know? Play around with that fear a little bit, but keep it where it belongs. It is nothing but a simple fear. It is inaccurate. Spiders are not these bloodthirsty monsters waiting to be aggressive and hunt down and attack us whatsoever. They are super shy, more shy than most of the other creatures I ever deal with. They are very timid and gentle beings. Many of the time that I've held one, uh, they're almost apologetic when they come walking over my hands like, oh, sorry, hope you don't mind, you know? And I'm not exaggerating. Anyone I know that handles spiders for a living says the same thing. They, they move about in a very deliberate and gentle manner, almost apologetically. I love me the spiders, and I'm so glad that I, I faced my fears. I jumped both feet into them, and not on them, and definitely uh, embraced, well, the world of spiders. I wanted to understand them. I wanted to feel more of a friend than a foe, and that's definitely where I am today. I definitely feel that I have a healthy relationship with spiders, and I feel very enriched because of it. I love me the spiders. And if given the chance, many of them are actually pretty cute. When you find a spider walk across their floor in the house and it's walking kind of slowly and pulling itself along, right off the bat, it's dehydrated. Put a drop of water in front of it and it'll drink that water. I've often held water on my fingertip and just held it up to them and I drank it off my finger. And then they just move better and go about their business and they act a lot less afraid and again, not aggressive whatsoever. I just don't know how else to say it. Spiders, they're good little people. They're not these monsters. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, and I'll see you in my next Scary Things video.